Okay, welcome back. Let's continue onward. So, in the last lecture, we were talking about uh, tracking systems, and I mainly covered the case of orientation only tracking. This is very useful for a fully portable virtual reality headset, and where you are completely relying on inertial uh, measurements, inertial measurement units, um, which gives you uh, gyroscope readings and accelerometer readings and magnetometer readings as well. Um, and as as some of you have asked, um, don't you also need to take into account the position of the head. So, if you do a motion back and forth like this um, or in general if you are tracking other rigid bodies such as your hands, um, then you would like to have position as well as orientation. <coughs> so, we talked about different cases and remember we were mentioning that there was the case of line of sight visibility that was the thing we finished on last time. So, we have visibility or line of sight you have some features that are in view of a camera and then you would like to figure out um, where these are in the scene. So, this leads to a very generic and well studied problem called the PNP problem. Uh, P the first P stands for perspective which is just the model of the camera projection. Remember that I said for each feature that you can see in the world this corresponds to as it strikes through the image plane a ray that you can narrow down that feature to in the in the world frame. <coughs> and then the second P is corresponds to points. So, perspective n points problem determine the rigid body transform the same transform we have been doing all along here. from identified observed features on a rigid body. So, in other words I start with a rigid body. So, <coughs> let me uh, and go back to this cube head that I had before. So, I may have particular features on here and um, you know perhaps it corresponds each one of my features may correspond to a corner of this right. I could imagine putting a bright LED on it and then um, based on where these LEDs appear in the image I have the trouble the problem of this figure or this this rigid body has moved somewhere I want to figure out what its position and orientation is. What is given to me is exactly each one of the LEDs I know the coordinates of the LEDs in the body frame and I also have labels for them this is LED number 1 maybe on this corner is LED number 2 on this corner and so forth I have labels on all of them and when I see them in the image I can recover the labels that is what um, identified means. So, how can this be done in practice? Well, I could have different colored LEDs right that would be one way to distinguish them. Another way to do it is to have them flashing in some way and make some kind of code over time. So, if I see them in multiple frames they could flash between um, a, a light mode and a dark mode or they could switch between two different uh, frequencies and you could get some kind of coded signal to identify them over several frames. So, things like that could be done. <coughs> Let us think about different versions of this problem and I like to um, I like to talk about degrees of freedom. So, how many degrees of freedom do we have for the rigid body before we see any features? 6 full 6 right all right. So, I guess um, I could say that um, if we just have P 0 P right n is the number of points. So, if I have 0 points seen then I guess I remain with um, 6 degrees of freedom for the object. If I observe a single point in the image, I just want to reason about the degrees of freedom now. So, for example, I have this object right and I can state that one feature is fixed let us suppose it is this corner. So, I have observed this corner I have identified it in the image. So, the question is what can this object do now while keeping this corner fixed in an image? How many degrees of freedom have I lost? Have I lost 3? Let us see. 
So can I do any rotation of this now? Not any rotation because this would be blocked right, but but let us just say in terms of degrees of freedom analysis we just do small perturbation. So, I should be able to do any yaw pitch and roll. So, that is 3 degrees of freedom still intact correct, but what if I make this thing closer or further from the camera moving exactly along the perspective projection line that goes to the point. Can I do that too? Yes. I think I can do that. So, that leaves 4 degrees of freedom for this. So, what is changed is that this one point that I get it right here this one point can no longer go this way and can no longer go this way because it has been fixed by the pixel in the image. So, so in, in some sense you can imagine the i j coordinates are the 2 constraints right the i j coordinates of this point in the image are the 2 constraints each one of those drops a degree of freedom. So, that means that there are 4 degrees of freedom left after one point. So, what about perspective 2 point problem? How many degrees of freedom are going to be left? Who, who thinks there is a pattern here maybe? Um, so, if I hold 2 points fixed maybe I take these opposing corners here and say that they are fixed I do not know if I can hold on to this very well. So, I guess in that case um, it looks like I could spin it like this right. Is that only 1 degree of freedom remaining then? Yeah, it is somewhat difficult to see, but I should be able to also um but do some kind of transformation where I move this back and forth. So, that the angle between the 2 rays here right that that stays fixed. So, I am kind of as if these 2 2 um features are moving along rails right and I can go further back while reorienting this and that is another degree of freedom. Does that seem ok? You know try it at home with your own uh, setup. Maybe I could do it here with a piece of chalk if I just. So, it is like it is like this and it should be yeah I have it like this right and I can go like this correct right. So, that is the extra degree of freedom try it again here make sure you get that. So, so I could go like this all right. So, we get this extra degree of freedom. Um, so, that means there are 2 DOS left here. So, we go to P 3 P and as you might imagine we are down to 0 degrees of freedom remaining. So, there are no more degrees of freedom remaining <clears throat> and in that case I have a picture that looks something like this I have imagine a rigid triangle that has my that has the features on the corners 1, 2, 3 and then these are all being observed in some image. So, I will try to make these lines all meet here. So, there is an image plane where these are being observed. So, I get these 3 points observed in the image. So, somewhere in here there is an image all I am really imagining is the detection of 1, 2 and 3. So, they are labeled I know which point is which and then I can pin this down except it is not the complete picture. So, in order to figure out exactly where this triangle is located it involves solving some equations. So, you have a system of polynomial equations to solve people have solved this one um you can find solutions all over the internet and in books, but um the interesting thing that comes up <coughs> when you try to solve this to figure out the solution is that you find out that there are generally 8 solutions. So, you get a system of polynomial equations. And there are uh, generically 8 solutions. It turns out that um, 4 of the solutions will be on the other side of the lines here. So, um, so you'll have 4 behind the focal point and 4 in front of the focal point. So, in reality, you'll get 
only four in front. That's if you set up lines in your, in your system of equations here. So only four in front of the camera. So that means that if I have a fixed rigid triangle and I make a kind of house for it or a cage for it out of these yellow lines, then that means that there are four different ways that I could stick that triangle in there so that the vertices of the triangle touch these lines. So you could also try that for a home project if you like, make, you know, make a pyramid out of three um, straight sticks and then see if you can fit a triangle in there four different ways. So, <clears throat> so the algebra works out for that. Um, in order to remove redundancy, you just go further. Um, so if we get up to P 4 P, P 5 P, um, <clears throat> there is still some redundancy, say there is still some multiple solutions. Um, and problems with coplanarity. Um, and this will especially be true in um, actual systems where you are observing these points in an image due to discretization and noise. Um, you may end up with several plausible solutions that are very close in terms of the image coordinates, but they might be quite far away in terms of the orientation of the triangle. So, there ends up also being almost solutions let us say or epsilon solutions in this range. And so, eventually you get up to P 6 P and higher the more points that you observe the better and the further away from being coplanar the better. So, this provides greater um, um, distinguishing power. So, um, on the Oculus Rift DK2 headset for example, there are I believe about 40 LEDs and they are distributed all over the place not necessarily coplanar. Um, so, um, so this gives a lot of um, discrimination power in terms of resolving the position and orientation of the headset when it is um, in front of the camera. Um, you do not see the LEDs because they are hidden behind uh, infrared transparent plastic. So, so, we cannot see through the plastic, but if you could see in the infrared spectrum then you would see the LEDs. You could also look at it with an IR camera if you want directly and show the images and you will see the LEDs lighting up. All right, <clears throat> does this make sense? So, we get enough information, we get enough equations to solve. Um, I do not want to go into what happens to you know how to solve each one of these equations. You start entering into a subject called computational real algebraic geometry. Um, it is sort of like the polynomial generalization of linear algebra. So, you know linear equation solving using linear algebra, there are whole methods for polynomial system solving. They, they become very useful in, ver in, in various uh, fields in engineering, robot motion planning for example they show up. Um, they also show up here in the uh, case of these kinds of solutions. Um, one thing to pay attention to is um, we call incremental P and P which is um, suppose I am looking at the image and in one coordinate frame I have the features and I have an estimate of the position and orientation and then in the next coordinate frame I notice that these features move by some small amount and I can still you know I still have my identification going. So, these features move by some small amount all I have to do is slightly update my estimate of the position and orientation correct right because in one frame time let us suppose your camera is running at 60 frames a second. So, that means your head is moving it cannot move too far in 16.67 milliseconds. So, there is a tiny change in the image here and all I need to do is figure out what is the change in position and orientation. I have the gyroscope and accelerometer which I can use as well to make a good estimate as far as how much change there has been in the transformation. And so, to do the final bit of correction I could just perform a, a very simple local optimization to just perturb this object. I could imagine using the equations of perspective transformation that I am just perturbing this object in the virtual world 
that I'm trying to track which in this case is the head. I'm trying to track the head and I want to just do a perturbation so that the the new position orientation that I am estimating lines up perfectly with the observation. So, I could just proceed in an incremental fashion like this it is like an incremental optimization where I just do a little bit of perturbation in each step and it ends up being fairly straightforward because it is not as hard as completely from scratch I show you the headset where am I I have to figure it out by solving the equations from scratch once I know the solution it does not change by very much from one frame to the next. So, that is what that part is. <coughs> Questions about that? So, that gives me a new measurement now it is another kind of drift correction information which is the updated position. So, in a, a position estimate that is based on line of sight visibility. So, now I can use that again in a filtering method let me just give a little bit of a description of how that works. And then we can move on to another tracking technology called lighthouse and then I will be done with uh, tracking methods 